Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Mike Vincent, Vice President of Customer Success and Growth at Windfall. I would like to welcome you to the International Luxury Hotel Association's webinar on marketing strategies to acquire, engage, and retain high-value guests with panelists Tom Graham, Leslie Marks, and Miguel Oliveira. Before we get into the discussion, we would like to set the context by sharing more about Windfall, our host for today's webinar. Uh, Windfall is a people intelligence and AI company that gives go-to-market teams actionable insights. We work with over 800 customers, including many in the travel, hospitality, and leisure space. Uh, I lead customer success here, which is our capability that does hands-on implementation and consulting of the Windfall platform with our customers. Uh, my background is in hospitality, where most recently, prior to Windfall, I served as Vice President of Corporate Strategy at MGM Resorts International. Windfall's vision is to democratize access, workflows, and insights on people. We do this by helping data-driven organizations identify who your ideal customer is, understand more about them through robust analysis and segmentation, and engage them through targeting and personalization. There's three pillars of uh, how we actually execute on, execute on this. Uh, the first is data enrichment. So we connect directly with your customer, your guest database. And for each person, we try to match them to someone in our data set of 90 million US households. And we return back to you all known households with key attributes on them. Things like wealth data, career data, and demographics. Second, uh, propensity scoring. So our data science team partners with you to develop machine learning models to define what your best guests or your leads look like. And finally, net new acquisition. So we build lookalike models and create audiences of who your next best customer will be. We load these into digital, social, or direct mail for you or your agency partners to target in marketing campaigns. Uh, so as I mentioned, we work with over 800 customers, including many in the hospitality, travel, and gaming space. Uh, some logos there that you recognize, including Serenite, uh, where Tom is joining us from. So if you have any questions about Windfall or our offerings, uh, feel free to reach out to me at mike at windfall.com. Cool. All right, now let's get started with today's discussion, uh, marketing strategies to acquire, engage, and retain high-value guests. And I'd like to pass it off to our speakers, Tom, Leslie, and Miguel, to provide an introduction of themselves and their organization to start. So uh, Tom, would you like to kick it off for us? Absolutely. My name is Tom Graham. I'm the Executive Marketing Director for Serenity Private Residence Club. We are a brand new private residence club located in the heart of the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. We are offering our, our um, membership uh, to a drive and play market in the essentially the tri-state area. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Cool. Leslie? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leslie Marks. I oversee uh, communications, marketing, PR, e-commerce, and social media for the Langham Huntington Pasadena, which is a historic resort about 15 minutes northeast of downtown Los Angeles. Um, the property opened in 1914. It's set on about 23 acres, and uh, we offer four dining outlets, a spa, tennis, swimming, fitness, and family programming throughout the year. Um, we're probably most famous for some of the films and TV shows that we've been in over the years, like The Parent Trap, Saving Mr. Banks, Westworld, and some others. Cool. Thanks. And Miguel, do you want to provide your introduction as well? Sure. Uh, my name is Miguel Oliveira. I'm the senior VP of uh, Global Direct and E-Commerce for AM Resorts. And AM Resorts is not a consumer-facing brand, but what we do is we manage luxury, all-inclusive resorts at the beach, at Caribbean and in Europe, and specifically the brand Secrets, Dreams, Zoe Tree, Breathless, uh, Sunscape, and Alula. And we are now part of Hyatt Hotels Corporation, so we are now uh, connected to the World of Hyatt uh, Loyalty Program, which is award-winning, and we can bring that incentive and the benefit to all of our guests worldwide. Cool. Thank you. So for our discussion, I'll probably uh, stop the screen share, and we can see all of your faces full. Um, let's jump in. So the first question we had is, 
you know, how do you leverage data and analytics to understand your guests? And, you know, through the, the efforts that you've made, like, what do you know about your guests today? And maybe, um, Tom, do you want to start this one off? Sure. Um, so what we've learned most about uh, kind of our membership and, and, and who we are, our product is, is mostly geared toward. In the selling process, we're always looking for the people who are, are ready, willing, and able. And through our, our, our data audiences, we're able to uh, find that able audience and market directly to them, uh, bringing them in um, so that we pretty much have to focus on the uh, willing <laughs> and ready, uh, which in, in sales are, are uh, for this kind of membership product. Um, and we've also realized that we have a, uh, due to our location, a large influx of uh, members from the Long Island area. So we're able to uh, segment and, and reach out directly to those potential members and also keep our current members engaged in ways that it would before using that data. Yeah, great. Uh, Leslie, do you have a, a perspective on how you all have looked at this? Yeah, we're a little unique within Los Angeles County being that although we're in Pasadena, which is home to the Rose Bowl and some other famous cultural institutions, and sci-tech hubs like NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we're really removed from the main tourist attractions of LA, and we're also located within a residential neighborhood, so we're not in walking distance of shops and restaurants. Um, so this can be a challenge since we're not the most obvious choice for travelers, but it's an opportunity to position ourselves as an oasis, which in post-COVID times has been a great advantage. Um, to that end, our bread and butter customer base hasn't changed a whole lot over the years. It's very heavy drive market, very local, lots of staycationers, lots of repeat guests who've been coming to the hotel or celebrating milestones over many decades. Um, and while that continues to be a reliable base, of course, we're looking at how it evolves and who new customers are so that we can tailor our messaging in those directions. So we use a combination of guest survey data, digital campaign conversion data, who's actually making our bookings, um, social media audience insights, and of course our reservation data to better understand where the guests are coming from, what their interests are, what they do once they're on property, and then what their value expectations are. Yeah, great. And Miguel, um, how do you leverage data and analytics to understand your guests? Uh, in multiple ways. So when we think about the guests who come to our, our all-inclusive resorts, I would say one big segmentation is just looking at where the resorts are located. And based on that, there is a, there are different source markets. So when you think about the Caribbean, Mexico is a massive location for us. We have more than 35 resorts there. But when you think about the DR, Costa Rica, um, Curaçao, and uh, for those, most of our, of our travelers come from the United States and they book through several methods. And we try to understand which channels they are using to book. Traditionally, uh, this segment or this industry grew through our relationships with travel agents and tour operators. And my job leaving the direct channels is to find opportunities to switch them over to book directly through our website, through our contact center. Um, and in Europe, most guests come from other European countries. So most of our resorts are in Spain. We have some in Greece, we're expanding to Bulgaria. Uh, in Portugal and the source markets there vary between Spain, Portugal, uh, Italy, and France. So we collect data from um, all of them as they check in. We have to really welcome them, give a little um, explanation of the resort, and we understand uh, based on that how much they spent, where they came from, which channel they used, their email address, and we populate in our CRM database to leverage um, multiple email campaigns, but also reinsert that into our um, paid media campaigns to understand not only who are lookalikes, but also try to not um, spend the same acquisition dollars with those guests. So there are multiple ways in which we understand that information, as well as which segment, we kind of, which kind of trip are they looking for? Depending on the brand, some brands are more uh, towards couples versus families like Dreams and Sunscape and also price points, which may vary. So it's really a match of understanding what they are looking for and which segments and lookalike models we can build to understand similar guests to those that are coming to us. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you began to touch on this, Miguel, but 
you know, like it sounds like you're doing a little bit of look like modeling uh, and so forth. But how has your understanding of your customers informed your approach to to net new acquisition campaigns? I'll say one, it starts with the basic um, demographics of what are the typical traveler who comes to an all-inclusive vacation? Like in many situations, like we overskill towards families, but we have adults only brands. So understanding their household income, their demographics, which are mid thirties to mid forties, and sometimes a little bit over that in the long tail, uh, how much are they willing to spend, which is not a typical trip that somebody does multiple times a year. You might do that once or twice. Um, there is a lot of seasonality in terms of when you're booking. It's not something you book for next week, like a conference hotel for a business. So it's usually uh, our busiest period to shop is between the end of December and early to mid-March for stays throughout the year, from the winter all the way to the end of the year. Um, but we, we try to uh, find that model of understanding what is the, the, the typical willingness to spend and um, how we can apply that towards the different kinds of, of, of uh, properties that we offer. Some of them will be more expensive depending on the location, depending on the um, upselling opportunities. But it's always about portraying uh, the sense of once you book, you don't have to worry about anything. So it's communicating the value of multiple a la carte uh, restaurants that are included, uh, luxury experiences on property. While there's always chance to upsell, um, it's really uh, understanding that type of customer and finding them versus somebody who might be more interested in paying less in a more generic buffet only experience and not coming to our resorts. Yeah, great. And Leslie, it sounds like you have a very strong uh, loyal base, like they know the brand, they've been there a while. Um, and that's great for retention and repeat visits and so forth. What are you doing to help drive net new acquisition? Like knowing what you know about your existing customers, how are you leveraging that to drive your next new customer and introduce them to the brand and get them to stay? So a lot of that um, relies on a huge awareness campaign because we're not only are we part of a smaller global brand, um, there's only four Langham hotels in the US, um, but because of our location challenges, we have to cut through a lot of that luxury hotel marketing noise, if you will, that exists in LA. Um, so on the e-commerce side, it's all about prospecting. Uh, we accomplish that via programmatic display campaigns and paid social, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, we do in some cases branch out domestically, but we primarily geo-target our key demographic, which is the state of California and those drive markets like Phoenix and Las Vegas. Um, we also do competitor targeting um, for customers of other luxury properties that we feel that we align with. Um, and behavior targeting for those who are searching for Los Angeles or maybe looking at LAX or looking at other um, travel related places in LA. Um, converted customers are then funneled into our retargeting campaign so we can kind of develop that customer retention. Yeah, fantastic. And Tom, I think it's really interesting because you have a, a kind of a different view on this versus a very established customer base you know, known the brand for a while, you've, you all built something in the past few years, you know, from scratch, more or less. Sure. So uh, with the early learnings that you've had about who you're, who signed up and raised their hand and become members, how has that helped inform your net new acquisition strategies ongoing? I think that always the, the heart of the project was to create a, a luxury um, experience in the, in the Pocono mountains, not really focusing on, um, it would be couples or uh, families, but what we've seen is just the huge response, especially during COVID, uh, of people really looking for that family experience. Uh, and that is you know, now the, the pillar of what we're trying to do. We're really trying to build this mountaintop community with world-class amenities on 125 acres. And we're all of our digital marketing our, our, our paid search, our Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, driving traffic to our website, uh, lead forms, uh, any kind of direct mail that we do. It's, it's all about building that community, which uh, we're, that's how we're using the, the data in our, our geotargeting tri-state. Uh, there's some uh, I expansion over that really tri-state area, but we're really looking and we've found is that, you know, an hour and a half to two hours is really that time uh, in, in the automobile that uh, people can kind of look forward to their, their getaway. And, and we're not trying to be any kind of 
destination uh, tropical island. We we know that our we know our place is that that getaway that that long weekend or that midweek retreat and and um, building that community uh, using the data has has um, we've actually like you said we've we've seen it from the very beginning. Cool, great. Switching gears a little bit, like we've talked to, uh, mostly about like prospecting in terms of net new acquisition. And you all have different uh, booking cycles. Some it's, you know, trying to drive conversion, immediate like awareness to conversion and book a stay. Some, I think Miguel, you'd mentioned our previous conversation that, you know, your consideration window is much larger, like, you know, it could be up to like three months, right? And, and Tom, similar uh, for your model. So as you're thinking of how you engage these individuals throughout the funnel, love to learn a little bit more about what you're doing within this space. And maybe Leslie, you could start with this one. You know, you've talked a lot about awareness. Um, that's been the focus of NetNew. What are you doing like uh, outside of awareness campaigns to help drive conversion? Um, because awareness is our key challenge, um, that's where we target people at that level. Um, tactically, our prospecting campaigns have performed extremely well for us about 70% of our display placements are dedicated to this. Um, and over 80% of our successfully converting paid social ads are prospecting. Um, right now, that seems to be enough to push people through to the final stage of purchasing. Um, so we really stuck with that. And um, it's all about um, creative imagery and copy. And um, that has, seems to be working for us. So we're sticking with it. Yeah, great. And then uh, Miguel, uh, what about for AM Resorts? Um, you know, what funnel specific stages strategies um, have worked for you? Uh, so we're playing most of the uh, the tactics, even in lower funnel tech, uh, lower funnel categories as well, because uh, as I mentioned, the AM Resorts is a is an internal facing brand. When we think about AMR Collection, which is an umbrella brand we launched last year. And to really connect to secrets and dreams and zoetry and breathless, which are more known, we always have to combine how much we spend in upper funnel and acquisition prospecting with lower funnel and retargeting. So um, I would say that in average, we would spend 30% of our media or 35 into acquisition prospecting and maybe 50 to 60 uh, in, in uh, retargeting and lower funnel, like paid search, meta search. So a lot of um, travelers um, skip our web, web, page, web pages altogether to go into the rooms and rates because they're actually looking at Google Travel, like they're Googling um, all-inclusive resorts in Cancun or all-inclusive resorts in Costa Rica. And then our goal is really to rank for those pages or to have competitive rates showing in the availability sections of the Google pages. So they will look at the images there, but then when they click on like check availability, they will take us, they will take the visitors all the way down to our rooms and rates page. So it's important to them when they land to reinforce the values of booking directly. So showing how they can earn word of Hyatt points since we're now part of Hyatt and all the properties in the Caribbean are now integrated with the loyalty program. How we can offer benefits like early check-in and late check-out depending on availability or um, additional discounts on spa treatments or, or shuttle service from the hotel, from the airport to the hotel. Like it's important to keep in mind that most of our travelers fly to our destinations. So they either book a flight through a package that we can offer through our website, so they can go through a tour operator or even to an OTA, but of course my goal is to shift them towards our direct channels. So that supplement of the lower uh, um, Funnel tactics is critical, but again, we, we need both in our case. I cannot rely only on acquisition. So retargeting on pay on social, Facebook, Instagram, and using techniques to identify where they are on the website if they come and then retargeting them later, or if they are running a search and they leave, we have this ability to uh, pop up a moto and say, hey, save your search so we can you can help you finish the search later. Sometimes we will offer a small uh, discount coupon to help the conversion but it's always kind of trying to retain the most of that traffic that comes to our sites. Yeah, fantastic. And it's really interesting for you because it's almost like a portfolio and an umbrella strategy, right? Because so you're building the overarching brand, but then you know people are seeking out specific resorts or specific sub-brands within the overall collective. So fantastic. Thanks for sharing. And then um, Tom, can you talk a little bit about some of your mid-funnel uh, strategies? Sure. <clears throat> 
Um, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of retargeting, uh, uh, social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, a lot of, uh, what we do as well as just, uh, any, any kind of a uh, quick se segmentation we have in, in our, e our e blast that we send out. Um, also we were able to, uh, with the help of, of windfall is really, uh, try some, um, direct mail pieces and, uh, some rather large direct mail pieces that were with folders and, and, and product books. Um, as we have more residences come online, as we establish new partnerships, uh, as our spa development comes along, it, it's really showing those uh, uh, customers that have come in uh, maybe months ago to really re-engage and say, "Hey, you know, this is what we, this is what's going on here at Serenity." So direct mail has been a, a, a pretty successful with that. But as far as the you know the retargeting, we're always updating our website. Um, and uh, we, we found success through those means. Yeah. And I think what you've all kind of covered is it's, you know, multi-touch, multi-channel, and especially even expanding to something like direct mail, where we saw that a lot in the pandemic, where uh, a lot of people were at home for, you know, the vast majority of the time, the ROI and direct mail bumped up a little bit. So a lot of brands shifted to that is a mechanism to help drive conversion. Obviously, it's a little bit more expensive, uh, but if you're getting that ROI off of the conversion, it, it makes sense. So really interesting to hear that um, from your side, Tom. Cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, customer loyalty. Um, and Miguel, you you even referenced you know, the benefits of being a part of Hyatt now, where you know, guests who stay like in the Caribbean can earn World of Hyatt points. Can you talk about how loyalty uh, factors into how you are like thinking about engaging with the existing members or customers and how you sure. like incorporate loyalty into that? Yeah, so we've been promoting that significantly since the beginning of May, which is when we uh, were able to integrate the properties in the Caribbean with the World of Hyatt program. So we are now uh, part of their global merchandising uh, promotional calendar. When we launched uh, the program at our properties, we had a promotion that would uh, encourage existing members to stay um, from uh, book stays of three nights or more, and they would earn 5,000 bonus points. Um, that already ended, but then we have additional promotions live and uh, a lot of site merchandising on the Hyatt website, as well as their mobile application. So we are running now kind of checks on how we can potentially cross promote our uh, email database because we have millions of um, emails we have collected and profiles which show where they stayed uh, how much they spent understand how many of those are members already and if they are we can uh, define uh, different promotional hooks it could be a combination of great discounts and loyalty points to have them come back for their future stay um, and we're collaborating with Hyatt with their uh, tactics as well so most of if not all of the digital marketing that we run is still run by my team, but we have a lot of collaboration to understand uh, those who are booking on the Hyatt websites um, so that we can understand if there's any changes in behavior, uh, any different propensity on how they book, how much they spend, and, and then find the best sweet spot to, to re-engage with them. But we are still kind of, I would say early stages, but maybe in the middle of the road in terms of combining those efforts. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And Leslie, I mean, you also are part of a larger global brand. As you mentioned, there's only four in the U.S. today. I think you are expanding. Uh, but can you talk about how you think of loyalty both to the property and then your vision for potentially how this, uh, you know, plays into a larger global brand? Sure. Um, well, the Langham Hotels and Resorts loyalty program um, uh, up to and including now has been segmented by interest. So we've had separate programs aimed at travel agents, our normal leisure guests, uh, dining guests, et cetera. But this has been really confusing for the consumers on the whole and also not really delivering the types of benefits that are meaningful to them, um, especially people that are loyal to this property that maybe they don't go to all the other Langhams, but they come back to this property. So they want specific benefits when they come back here. Um, so the entire program is being revamped into one tiered plan that we hope will not only attract new loyalty members, but engage the current ones to become more active. Um, although we're really relying on the brand to help deliver that, um, they've been very um, open about asking for specific property feedback. And I think a lot of the properties have the same 
um, feedback that we do where, you know, maybe people aren't traveling all over the world and they're going from Langham to Langham, but they go to the one that's closest to them a lot because they want to have a getaway or they go to the ones that are in their region. Like we have Toronto, Chicago, New York, Boston. Um, so um, hopefully a more simple approach with worthwhile benefits that people are expecting at the same properties um, will be a little more consistent um, communication for people and kind of what they've been asking for. And I think they'll be happy once it's finally delivered, hopefully next year. Cool, great. And then Tom, you all are a different model, like it's a, a membership model. So loyalty means something different. I think for you, one of the yardsticks is you know, referrals, like how big of an advocate is your current member so that they bring in other members to also join. Can you talk a little bit more about your efforts there and some of the results and just how you view loyalty within that uh, overarching theme? Sure. You know, um, having that loyal uh, membership base, uh, people uh, that came in as as we offered at one point, um, become a founding member of Serenite. Um, kind of made them even take more pride in, in where the uh, direction was going. And, and the, as more amenities come online, as more residences come online, they really become uh, that referral generators and uh, also the possibility of upsells. Um, now that they see that, you know, maybe they were looking, they really love the three bedroom, but uh, the five bedroom uh, with the rooftop deck is something that they could see themselves in, you know, with, with some friends or extended family. Uh, so we offer a concierge service as well too. So we're we're literally just trying to connect all of our members with these these mountain adventures and, and just to really make it uh, a true getaway where they don't really have to worry about uh, much. Show up, enjoy uh, from from wild to mild. They can kind of do it all. And um, our current membership base has really been champions for for what we're delivering. Yeah, great. So moving a little bit further along in the guest journey and thinking about more ancillary services or how you engage guests for upsells, maybe Leslie, can you talk a little bit about some of the strategies you employ, knowing who your guests are, how to help grow that share of wallet? So we do a couple of things. Uh, we have the option of segmenting our pre-arrival emails based on criteria such as the category of room that was booked, a date range where there may be something going on at the hotel or the type of guests in their party, like if there are children, um, to upsell things like our club level, if they booked um, a regular room, but they wanna add that club lounge service, um, suites, uh, we can upsell different various categories, um, family programming, as I said, whether it's ongoing or something that's specific to their date range, um, like if there's a cooking class on a certain day, they'll be here, or a specific children's event or package um, if they have kids. Um, we also work with some third party software to implement customized widgets on our website. Um, hopefully not too intrusive pop ups. Um, they also are served within the booking engine and they're pretty seamless like you wouldn't even know that it was a pop up that's part of the booking engine. Um, it looks just like the rest of the booking engine. Uh, so within the purchase process, if they're in the middle to kind of um, before they hit you know, confirm booking, we can upsell a couple different types of those similar experiences. Cool. Uh, and Miguel, on, on your side, obviously, it's a little bit of a different booking cycle, right? But, you know, what are some of the strategies that you've put in that post booking, you're able to promote ancillary services or just driving upsells for other activities or rooms or whatever it might be? Sure. So yeah, the fact that it's a long booking cycle actually gives us more opportunities between the time they book to the time they check in um, to find like that sweet spot of having um, the second wallet effect because they will spend a chunk of money. Our average booking value ranges between like twenty five to thirty five and sometimes like more like twenty five to thirty five hundred dollars. And we do offer uh, ancillary services in the moment of booking if they're going through our websites or through our contact center. And that includes uh, not only finding the right room type, but usually if they pick one, once they understand, uh, we don't push to upsell too much during that same booking process, but we do offer the ability to uh, book travel insurance, which knowing that, um, especially if you're booking a flight, it carries a great deal of flexibility, but even if you're doing room only and something changes, you're booking an unrefundable hotel rate, you can change your mind, um, change the dates of peace of mind, 
subtle transportation. We have a company that is part of the Apple Leisure Group holding company, which AM Resorts is part of it to make things more complicated. And that company is called Amstar. We offer not only transportation from the airport to the resorts, but also excursions during the day, during the week, during the stay. We can offer that as well. Um, so we have that option to offer while you're booking. After you complete your reservation, if you don't book, we send you emails um, a few weeks prior to the arrival, reminding like, hey, you should be excited. Your trip is coming up. By the way, would you like to book X, Y, Z? And then we find which offers are more likely to drive conversion as well as at that point, the ability to do an upselling, uh, an upgrading of the room to a club level. Um, and through the combination of those uh, tactics, we find ways to upsell. If they don't book, if they don't upsell or upgrade in any of those instances, there's always the check-in. As we're welcoming them, we show, hey, by the way, we have this uh, higher level room at a discounted rate, or would you like to book excursions for the British state, for your family, check out um, activities during, uh, which are local to your destination. And, um, and then through that, we, and even if you're, in, if you don't book directly with us, you can also come to the website and then book your transportation and um, additional dining experiences, romantic, like you can even buy a wedding package online, but that's not where we sell most of our wedding packages naturally. Yeah, right. And I think it's what you've really highlighted is meeting the guests where they're at and also the the way that they might want to engage with it. Like some people are going to book direct and giving them the ability to say, hey, I want to book my wedding package online. I'm going to do it all. There are customers that want that. So giving them that opportunity. Some are in and then kind of uh, another way of looking at it. Some people don't plan at all prior to, but having that opportunity at check-in to understand who, you know, who the guest is a little bit and then be able to signal, okay, well, maybe they want a larger room, whatever else that is uh, uh, like benefits their guest experience, but also at the same time, it increases revenue uh, for the business too. That's right. Great. Um, so kind of the last piece of the, the cycle that we think about is how you, how you do attribution or how you do analysis and reporting on the results of all the marketing uh, campaigns and the data-driven campaigns that you're running. Um, and really thinking about like the, the strategies that you put in place, I think that would be most helpful for this audience. Uh, and I think you each have kind of a different take on it. So maybe Miguel, you can kick us off and talk a little bit about some of the strategies um, you all have implemented to close the loop and optimize marketing campaigns based on your learnings and insights and so forth. Sure. So the basic uh, way that we, one of the basic ways we look at is feeding back the data from the transactions using Google Analytics into our marketing platforms like um, Google Ads or Double Click. And depending on which kinds of transactions and guests are completing their bookings, it allows us to optimize our bidding strategy in paid search or to do better retargeting through the social platforms. Um, so we, we go through that. In terms of attribution, we look at different ways, right? Like if we were to apply uh, view through, for example, to our display campaigns, only view through like our return on ad spend would be massive, but we know that it's unlikely somebody's only going to look at display ad and not do anything and some, some, somehow come back and book. So we, we look at our return on ad spend in different ways. We look at last click and we also look at the impact of view through for some of the, the, the tactics. And then directionally, we try to look at the trends to see if they're evolving in a similar pattern or not to understand if you are driving the most impact on the campaigns. Um, but it's usually, it's an evolving, it's an evolving, um, I would say, it, it, it's a combination of science and art because there are ways it can apply different weights to the different kinds of medium that you are looking at, um, or you can put more emphasis on the last click. So, so far we look at those two ways, combination of view through by itself and and, and um, also looking at last click. Yeah, and I love the way that you put that, the, it's a science and an art, right? You need the quantitative, you need to be able to tell the MROI of the campaigns you're running. But also understanding that, you know, a lot of the, the influence to a conversion could be more upper funnel tactics. And if you don't get visibility into those, then everything's attributed to last click. And, you know, we've seen some uh, some of uh, the folks that we've partnered with, you know, really drive more budget than to the activities that are driving conversion. It's like, well, it's, you have to think of the whole funnel cycle and, and so forth. So it's great that you're having some visibility uh, into that but also knowing that part of it's, you know, got to be based on gut and in the art of it, as you look at, you know, how everything plays together. 
And Leslie, I think you do a lot on the reporting, the management side, like, you know, evaluating campaigns on a monthly cycle. Can you talk a little bit more about the the activities that you're doing to help um, inform what's working, what isn't, and then closing the loop uh, based on those insights? Sure. Um, we do a few things. Well, we do a monthly deep dive into each of our digital campaigns um, to understand the performance. We have an overall ROI goal for ourselves based on past years, based on what we think we can do this year. And if it's met or exceeded, great. If not, each month we take a look at what underperformed, which specific ads underperformed, and either modify or get rid of those that aren't working so we aren't burning our budget. And then we optimize for what is working or we try something new. It's a little bit of experimenting to see what works, imagery, copy, the actual offer. Um, and seasonality definitely plays a part. So we try not to make decisions that are too abrupt. We have to give campaigns the time to um, work their way through um, who they're targeting. Um, in terms of website analytics, um, what I really look at is my conversion funnel. So how many visitors down to how many initiated bookings down to how many converted bookings. And in the months where I see that that percentage is very low, um, I, we take a look at what we can do to impact that. And sometimes it's, it's those, uh, pre pre arrival emails. Um, sometimes it's those, um, with, uh, within the booking engine, those widgets that help upsell or help, um, push people to finish their booking. Um, another thing that I like to do is to apply a heat map to our website every once in a while so that I can see what's grabbing people's attention. And then that helps me to kind of. Um, if I need to move things around or um, add links different places or, you know, whatever the website may need to kind of optimize that customer journey to keep them on the website and get them to book. Um, and usually it's a matter of simplifying. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, cool. Thank you for that. And then, Tom, uh, can you speak a little bit more about the attribution process that you all use to uh, demonstrate the efficacy of your campaigns? Sure. So uh, in our audiences, we're kind of targeting uh, a base net worth. Uh, we, our membership starts uh, entry level around 60,000. So it's a matter of uh, our audiences usually have a presence of children uh, with a, uh, a net worth. And, and what we found is, you know, analyzing that, that data and then looking at our, our ad creatives, we're able to uh, have weekly meetings to see, you know, who's who's coming in that lead funnel, who's coming in, who's converting into uh, on-site um, visits, uh, and who's actually uh, purchasing the, the memberships. Um, and that's just through uh, doing constant, constant um, analysis of the data that we have, uh, UTM parameters, tracking uh, different call to actions, uh, different uh, buttons, different... Um, um, creative and just massively uh, trying to sit on your hands and, and let um, Facebook, Instagram uh, kind of uh, learn the way it needs to learn without being uh, kind of uh, too knee jerk. Um, and also realizing that a lot of these uh, digital marketing efforts uh, do kind of complement each other where it's from uh, someone seeing us on Instagram then uh, hitting over to a Google search um, and, and then going to our website and then going through that, that more uh, natural journey of, of finding a little bit about more of, of what the product is. So now you're bringing an educated uh, potential member who has seen our advertising style, who has seen our website and they're you know, our, our pretty much our, our perfect potential member. Yeah, right. And I think that the one uh, add, add on there too is because a lot of your targeting efforts, whether they're the prospecting or the, the mid funnel direct mail are powered using windfall audiences too. One of the things we're able to do as a company is match back. Okay, here are the folks that were in the audience. We created a list of 1 million folks. We sent this over to Facebook and Instagram or Google, or whatever else. And then being because we're connected to your CRM, we see the people coming through and we're able to create that connection across and say, hey, these are the people you targeted. These are the people that came through and it kind of complements some of the UTM tracking efforts or lead source, whatever else that your CRMs are able to have access to just to help tell, uh, again, a more holistic picture. So again, it's that, that art and science uh, piece that uh, I, I love the way you put it. 
uh, it just kind of helps uh, paint the full uh, picture there. And especially with all the privacy landscape changing, the decline of the cookie and you know, the walled gardens uh, seem every month to be a little bit different um, in how targeting can be executed, their attribution process, et cetera. Uh, there's just so much going on that we could probably do a full uh, webinar on in and of itself and some of the strategies y'all are implementing there based on all of the changes, um, but appreciate uh, some of the, the the commentary on it. And there is that, uh, just to go back on that, there is a complimentary where someone comes and enters our, our funnel through a, a Facebook, Instagram, or a lead form on our website, uh, comes to us, and then we're able to hit them with the direct mail, with the QR code. So then it's in their hand, and it, it, they scan the QR code, it goes back to the digital landscape, and you, you're just, we're able to track it all along the way, their kind of their journey. So when we know that they're coming on site, it's how did this person, how is this person sitting in front of us? Oh, they did this. They saw this. They responded to this, and it really is uh, interesting to see those kind of those trends. And, and that's kind of the, the name of the game with of of how we um, uh, do the copy and, and have creative to really bring those in to really track it. Yeah, excellent. Perfect. Well, uh, last question that we had, and you know, I think each of your properties was impacted slightly differently by the pandemic. And as we're kind of in this post-pandemic-ish world right now, one just and hopefully this is one of the last webinars we'll be talking about because it, it is becoming the new normal. Uh, but want to just get your uh, perspective on how you've adjusted your strategies. Um, as the industry and as your your business has uh, navigated it out out of the pandemic, um, so maybe Tom, do you want to uh, kick this one off? And then Leslie and Miguel, you can follow. Sure. Um, Pennsylvania shut down for COVID the day that our our website relaunched with a brand new redesign, uh, which was meant to give virtual tours, uh, kind of guided virtual tours of of what we were creating. So. With that in mind, we are expecting to maybe give five to 10 virtual tours to potential members, and we end up doing close to 70 virtual tours per day uh, for uh, months, uh, which led us to um, developing an entire SDR team that just did virtual tours to convert to on-site um, visits when uh, Pennsylvania did open up again. That being said, um, we are more than happy uh, to, to be in the position that we are right now. COVID has uh, really energized the Pocono Mountains. Uh, I think people realized to, to uh, that time spent together with, with loved ones and family and, and, and not to take um, that too lightly and escape city life, go out, fresh air, space, activities. Um, so we're still seeing that uh, kind of a, a pivot and, and uptick, um, and, and it's even more exciting now because we have more residences to offer, we have more amenities coming online. Um, so I think just seeing that kind of shift in the landscape of, of really being, you know, everyone's kind of pent up for a while, and it, it's time to really uh, travel, get away, and, and take time to kind of start these new family traditions. Yeah, yeah. And I think the benefit of being a, a, a drive destination to uh, kind of help mitigate some of the worst of it. And Leslie, you uh, you all are similar, like you mentioned, but a lot of your customer is uh, drive traffic. You know, can you talk a little bit about how uh, the pandemic impacted and kind of where the property is at today and where you're going next? Yeah, so um, as you probably know, California was one of the first places to shut down completely and one of the slowest to open back up, um, especially in the major cities like LA. Um, and so uh, it impacted our business severely immediately, um, so much so where the hotel did close completely for three or four months. Um, and then when we were able to reopen again, initially it was all about providing a clean, safe experience where people felt comfortable because you wanted to be thoughtful about your health and safety practices and we were certified by Forbes for health and safety. And so we really promoted that everywhere. I wanna make feel, people feel good about being here. Um, having so much outdoor space on 23 acres and being away from the city helped. Um, but now people just wanna feel back to normal. I think most of us in the hospitality industry would agree the customer has changed since the pandemic happened. Um, Tom kind of touched on this, but people 
want to get away. They want, they've been pent up and now they want value for their dollar, which they always have. Um, people have always been discerning about their overall experience and they're willing to either sing your praises or complain in an online forum if there's a misstep. But now people have missed out on these experiences they love for like three years. They haven't traveled, they need a change of scenery. They wanna try new food. Um, they wanna be taken care of. They wanna get away from it all. So now the traveler who maybe didn't think twice about spending a lot for a luxury escape wants to get a lot in return for every dollar they spend. They've put off celebrating an occasion. They've had to keep their kids inside. And being able to do that now is more meaningful to them. Um, so we want to attract people with the promise of an amazing one-of-a-kind experience, but it's also up to us to come through with that so that they go, I can't wait to go back there. So you want to attract the high value customer, but to do that, you have to deliver on that commitment even more than ever before. So I would say that maybe while our outreach tactics haven't changed other than trying to take advantage um, of different ways that emerge you know, every day to do so, our messaging and our offerings have and that we need to be more creative, more personalized um, and deliver a more meaningful experience because um, we have to be clear about what value we're offering people because that's what they expect. Yeah, great. And Miguel, maybe to close this out, you know, you are a very different model, international travel, a lot of different countries, probably had different environments over the past few years. Can you talk a little bit more about how your strategies changed and where you're at today? Sure. So unlike some of the destinations, Leslie and some we're talking about, uh, our properties in the Caribbean, they, um, for the most part, stayed open, specifically in Mexico, because it was one of the few countries where you could still enter without proof of vaccination or even a test required. So that combined with the pent up demand last year as vaccines were being rolled out, like the, the, the trends in booking travel and people coming, going to all-inclusive resorts, which also offer the benefit of being um, a lot of uh, outdoor and uh, a lot of space. It don't have to be really crammed in. Not a, it's easier to just social distancing. We really capitalized on that to drive more and more of that volume. So we saw great, um, really great trends in terms of uh, bookings and we also encourage that by offering free testing on site and a guarantee whereby if you happen to test positive we gave you uh, up to 14 days of free stays at our resorts until you could test negative again so there was a lot of internal debate whether we would offer it but we not only were the first in the industry to to offer that benefit but the ratio the number of the the ratio of individuals with test positive was really, really low. So it was really, it didn't change the experience. It was a great selling point. Naturally, now we, we eliminated that practice. Since uh, tests uh, became uh, unnecessary to come back to the US, we're not offering free testing anymore. They can still take the test, but it's paid. Uh, we don't have that, that, that guarantee. But we also changed the, the own property experience by increasing like significantly the procedures for cleaning, like main of our buffets. Uh, they were assisted assisted serving, so the staff had to um, serve the guest as opposed to you serving yourself, which has an impact in delivery, you need more staff. Uh, so it was challenging. We were able to remove that as well as restrictions go down. You still have to wear a mask in some of the locations, but in Europe, the properties were um, impacted a lot more than uh, in, in Mexico and the Caribbean. So I would say now, similar to what Leslie said, our tactics have not changed, but we did see an increase of travelers booking directly because they wanted the flexibility of changes and cancellations, which are not as easy if you book externally. And we are now working hard to keep that share of travelers to get them to book again through our direct channels. So emphasizing even, even more uh, the benefits that we offer if you book directly with us. A hundred percent, you know, it's. Uh, keeping that, uh, owning the customer data too, knowing who they are, their preferences, being able to track that over time. So it becomes that, it, you know, that iterative loop where you can continue to offer personalization and things like that and build that relationship and that loyalty over time. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I just wanted to thank you all um, for participating in the webinar, offering your perspectives, sharing your experiences. And also to thank everyone um, for joining the International Luxury Hotel Association's webinar series. Uh, if you found the webinar to be of value, please do share the recording. And recordings of past webinars can be found on the website, theilha.com under events. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you again and have a wonderful day.